Those, um, you know, even big six courses uh, that my mom forced me to take, those are things that I actually now put into practice. You guys like raised your eyebrows at that, but I'm pretty sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, anyways. Product placement, um, specifically analytics and innovation is the unit that I report to. Uh, and our mission is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, we try to make uh, information available to our officers and to um, people who make decisions that could be the chief. Uh, my office is on the same floor as the chief's floor, so he'll just, you'll just go to the bathroom and just walk out and the chief's walking by, so you're like, oh, hi, sir. Don't wear your PJs to work. Um, we want to become the industry leading analytics center of excellence. Um, and that means we deal with a lot of data. We are a big data company. Um, as you can imagine, we have a lot of calls for service. Um, all of that is stuff that I touch every day. So I'm constantly I'm writing SQL queries all day. Uh, I'm trying to come up with dashboards and ways to uh, turn that into usable information for someone who doesn't have stats or a data analytics background. Um, and obviously, we want to be recognized as leaders. Toronto, we're the biggest municipal service in Canada. We want to be looked at as the leaders in what we're doing. Our strategy is uh, largely, you don't have to read all this, but our strategy is largely based off of uh, Chief Saunders' um, The Way Forward uh, document, which was about using data to have evidence-based policing. In the past, policing was all about, well, I'm going to go to this street to do enforcement because I kind of know from the past few years that that's where people drink and drive. I just kind of know that. I just know that as a story. Uh, so I'm going to go there again tonight because I went there last night and I got a few tickets. Instead, the chief is asking us to use data, not just police data, but lots of data from other sources to figure out where should we really be going to be the most effective. And what does that mean? Does an increase in the number of DUI charges mean that we're doing really well because we're catching people? Or does that mean that it's actually bad because we're catching more people who are doing it, right? So challenging questions to answer and how do we tackle that? In addition, we want to be accessible and we have, want to have information transparent. Um, the nature of open data and how things are nowadays, we can't just be working as a silo. So we share a lot of our good information and I'll talk about that in a minute. Some of the day-to-day -day problems that I deal with, uh, either in the course of my career or regularly, uh, number one, where should I deploy police officers to combat a particular crime? For example, sexual assault. Uh, is there a particular park where sexual assault is happening? And uh, what's the victims look like? Um, secondly, which schools have the most students where I can initiate a traffic safety campaign? Um, where is that data coming from? Who are the key victim groups for a particular crime? How can I engage them in preventing future crimes? So if I know sexual assaults are happening in a certain park, I know there's a there's a serial sexual assault uh, suspect. What's his victim group that he likes to talk to um, to try to initiate conversation? And how can I engage that group to initiate safety campaigns? Um, what intersections are most prone to fatal motor vehicle collisions? And what impact does the presence of a red light camera have on the intersection? Number five, I think. Tell me if these four houses that were broken into were done to by the same were done by the same individual. So um, if I have Four break and enters on Drury Lane, and um, every single time police officers go, there's like a muffin wrapper left on the kitchen table. Right? That's a unique thing. So on my end, I have to be able to catch that and say, okay, there's four houses with muffin and wrappers that don't belong to the owners. There's a chance that all this is related. And who is this muffin man who leaves? Muffin wrappers at the house he breaks into on Drury Lane. Right? That's something I have to solve. Uh, two suspects were involved in a robbery at a park. Who are all the people who have been charged with robbery in the past that live within 50 kilometers of that incident? Lastly, does the presence of a safe injection site in a particular neighborhood increase or decrease violent crime? How is this perceived by the community living there? Maybe it's not going up. Maybe crime in the area of a safe injection site actually does not go up. But how is that perceived? Um, Dr. Bill says perception is reality. I don't know. One, you know, it, it's, it, maybe they, it's not true, but maybe that's what they think it is. That's still something that has to be uh, Don't really have to talk too much about this, but our unit structure is we have our analytics and innovation um, unit. We have four different uh, units within our, sorry, subunits within our unit. 
The ANCO unit does a lot of is a lot of IT people actually who help us build and monitor databases. So we have an mediator, we have a data science a data scientist, um, a lot of uh, coders, um, people building dashboards and stuff like that. Crime analysis, which is where my hub is, um, that's actually trained people who regularly deal with the data, uh, crunch numbers, mining stuff, and try to figure out the answers to questions. Uh, so project coordination and as well innovation. So that's innovation is literally trying to take a new idea that someone in our service has and trying to just go with it. Um, so it could be something totally different that we've never done and we try to work that in. Our flagship product is the Toronto uh, Police Service Public Safety Data Portal. Um, that's the website, it'll be important later, uh, but I'll bring it up again in a bit. The purpose of the portal, again, is to publish open data sets. We all know what an open data set is, right? That means it's open, everyone can use it for your purposes. We give you all the data, we give you the metadata, we give you stuff that explains what the fields are. Um, you can download the data uh, from our open data portal. You can visualize it. We've tried to make sure that our website also has some level of analytics in there already, so that if you're not an analytical mind, you can still sort of click through some dashboards and get some answers to some quick questions. <coughs> We're also streamlining the information, making sure everything's presented the same way, um, so that every field, if it's in multiple data sets, it's always represented the same way. So that's important. Uh, we also want to make sure things are up to date, so when year end happens, then we have to upload new data sets for the year end. And also freedom of information request, which is a longer piece that I won't go into too much. Your project, auto theft. So okay, over 11,000 vehicles were stolen in the city of Toronto between 2016 and 2018. That's a lot. Um, just think about that, just visualize that, and sure that everyone knows somebody who's had their car stolen or potentially has had their car stolen. Um, a lot of the time these vehicles are sold to sell the vehicle um, right off or for its parts. Sometimes they're used for transportation, uh, potentially in the commission of another crime. So if I'm going to uh, go um, stab your professor, then I don't want to be seen in my own car. Sorry. So I'm gonna go steal your car, go stab her, and then dump the car, and then no one can figure out who I am. Well, we're smarter than that, but it's just an example. Um, or potentially for fraud. So I'm gonna steal your car now and I'm gonna say that I own it and I need to do a quick sell and I need to sell for 500 bucks. It's gone, the person just takes it, I take off, I give them a fake name of who I am and oh, well, good luck trying to find me. Um, also the methods have advanced uh, for stealing as technology against theft is also advanced. It's a very real concern. So it's in the newspaper, if people don't, Car thieves don't necessarily look like, you know, with their balaclavas on and stuff. Sometimes they just look like dudes, right? Uh, short video that I'm just going to show you to show that this is a real concern. Okay, so more.
was five to seven minutes, let's say, to cut through. So either you have to sell an electric grinder or you're cutting through a hacksaw. So it's just a deterrent. Others are cutting through and putting up food on your car in the driveway. Imagine installing that every single time and then uninstalling it. For uh, around your residence, as you have so much to keep on, the key away is the front door. If there is an opportunity for comfort or electronic copy, that is not within range. Because you'll tell me what I'm going to do.